Great. So the second talk is on dynamic phase and harmonic state space modeling. Um, and the presenter is Philippe de Rouen. He received his master's degree in electromechanical engineering from UC Louvain in 2017. And he's now pursuing a PhD degree uh, in Belgium. Um, in KU Louvain, his research interests include modeling and control of power electronic converters and stability analysis of HVDC system. And his, support, uh, his work is supported by Research Foundation Blenders. Okay, please go ahead. Thank you, Stephen, for the introduction. Can you hear me well? Yep. Great. So um, I'm Philippe de Rua, uh, and the title of the paper is A Comparative Study of Dynamic Phaser and Harmonic State Space Modeling for Small Signal Stability Analysis. So this paper makes a comparison between two promising modeling methods that can be used for small signal stability analysis of paraelectronic converters, namely dynamic phasers and harmonic state space. So when we first got to discuss these methods within the team, we realized that they share evident features. And so we were interested in determining and also understanding their similarities, differences, advantages, and limitations. So in the paper, we make a fair comparison of the methods based on a test system. And we also show the impact of truncation, uh, of truncation on the eigenvalues, but I, I'll get back to this. I will start with a short recap on periodic systems to show uh, in which cases harmonic state space and dynamic phasers can be used. And the comparison of the methods covers first their analytical derivations and based on a test system, I will compare their eigenvalues and transfer functions before um, concluding the presentation. So let's start with the short recap on periodic systems. As you certainly know the small signal stability analysis of a dynamic system can be studied by means of two main techniques. Uh, the first technique relies on the eigenvalues of the state matrix A in the state space representation, while the second technique involves the transfer function representation of the system in Laplace domain. So these techniques are valid for linear time invariant systems and things become more, become more complicated when the coefficients of the state space representation are not time invariant but time variable or in this particular case time periodic. The issue is that there is no constant steady state point uh, for the analysis and the eigenvalues and the transfer functions of the system cannot be obtained in a straightforward manner anymore. So there are several approaches that can be used to tackle this issue. The first one transforms time periodic systems into time invariant systems. And it uses uh, multiple synchronously rotating reference frames. It relies on park transformation. This is convenient and uh, for, for simple cases, but it quickly becomes cumbersome for complex cases. For instance, when systems have variables with multiple harmonics in steady state. Another way is to directly study the stability of the time periodic system by applying floquet lyapunov theory. With these methods, we can determine the eigenvalues of the system, uh, but the input-output description is still time-dependent and transfer function analysis cannot be applied directly either. So a solution to uh, obtain the eigenvalues and transfer functions without using multiple synchronous frames is called frequency lifting. This is a method to efficiently transform time periodic systems into equivalent time invariant representations. For example, if we have a scalar signal that is periodic in steady state, it will be represented by a vector of signals that have constant values in steady state. So both dynamic phasers and harmonic state space, which we study in this paper, are examples of frequency lifting techniques. Knowing that they both rely on frequency lifting, let's see where they are different. So let's start with uh, the comparison based on the analytical derivations. Um, what we can say is that essentially both dynamic phasers and harmonic state space methods rely on the same principles, although in different orders. The three steps are a modification of the signal representation, the method of harmonic balance, and linearization. 
so in the case of harmonic state space, we start from the nonlinear state space representation of the system, which is linearized around a steady, a steady state periodic trajectory. And this results in a linear time periodic system. The second step consists in changing the signal representation. So knowing that we are dealing with a periodic system, the state variables are written as infinite Fourier series with complex valued coefficients. We still want to capture the dynamics of the system, so the Fourier coefficients are assumed to be time dependent. The state space coefficients are periodic, so the Fourier coefficients are constant in steady state. So as a consequence of the modified signal representation, the multiplication of coefficients and state variables leads to a convolution of Fourier coefficients in the new formulation. And as for the time derivatives of the states, they require the application of the chain rule because both the Fourier coefficients and the complex exponentials are functions of time. So this leads to apparition of JK omega terms. Uh, the last step is to apply harmonic balance, meaning that phasors of same frequency on both sides of the equality must be equal. And from there, we obtain separate sets of equations for each harmonic index. So now the system is linear and time invariant. Uh, the state space coefficients are, do not depend on time anymore, which is what, uh, what the goal was. The system is represented here in a compact matrix form where states, vectors, and matrices have infinite dimensions. And in particular, the matrices have a special block to blitz structure, meaning that they have same elements, block elements on the diagonals. The new states matrix has also an additional term, uh, which contains the JK omega terms coming from the time derivatives of the states. All right, so that was for a harmonic state space. The derivation for dynamic phasor models follows the exact same steps, but it starts with the change of signal representation, then harmonic balance is applied, and it is followed by linearization. So this also results in a linear time invariant system. So you might be more familiar with the slightly different notation that is used to refer to dynamic phasors here. Uh, additionally, in this paper, we consider a common change of variables in which the complex valued dynamic phasors are represented in rectangular form. That is to say that they are represented by their real and imaginary parts. The complex conjugate Fourier coefficients at the negative frequencies are expressed in terms of the same real valued states. States, sorry. So to sum up, concerning an derivations, the same steps are applied in a different order and there is a different notation and uh, one method is real values while the other is complex values. Uh, let me just take a few seconds to uh, drink a bit of water. All right. So now let's have a look at the test system that we used in the paper uh, before continuing the comparison. So to clearly show how the methods are applied, we chose a very simple average model of a two-level converter with an AC side filter and a constant uh, DC side current source. So we do not use a stiff vol a DC voltage source, that is to say that the dynamics of the DC side capacitor are included in the analysis. The state variables are the currents in the inductors, uh, the voltages across the capacitors, and the there are also two states per phase related to the proportional resonant current controller. We did not consider outer control loops nor PLL uh, in this case. So because of power balance between the two sides, the system is nonlinear, and because all variables are in the ABC frame of reference, the resulting small signal model is time periodic. And so this justifies the application of frequency lifting techniques such as dynamic phasor and harmonic state space. Before applying the methods to this test system, we define two parameters. First, HM. Uh, this refers to the maximum harmonic index in the steady state periodic trajectory. Also, the modeling methods have infinite dimensions in theory, so the matrices must be uh, truncated in particular so that we can calculate the, the eigenvalues of the system the truncation order is noted HT and it defines basically the size of the resulting matrices. 
for harmonic state space, we usually include all Fourier coefficients below the truncation order, which is equal to three in this uh, example. And for dynamic phasors, uh, there is usually more flexibility. For example, for variables with only a DC component in steady state, we include only the DC Fourier coefficients. For variables with only an AC component in steady state, for instance, at the fundamental frequency, we include only the real and imaginary parts related to the fundamental frequency dynamic phaser. For more complex harmonic content in steady state, we can uh, choose to include any necessary Fourier coefficients below the truncation order, as in this last example. So in the paper, we carry out the analysis for a selection of different truncation orders and different states included in the dynamic phaser models. Uh, so with the help of the test system, we can now compare the eigenvalues and transfer functions of the two methods. Let's first have a look at the two models with the red and green markers. So red for dynamic phasers and green for a harmonic state space. And in these models, all DC and fundamental frequency coefficients are included. Uh, and also in those two cases, the truncation order is equal to one. In this case, both dynamic phasers and harmonic state space model have the exact same eigenvalues. Uh, so in the dynamic phasor model highlighted in blue, only fundamental frequency coefficients are included for AC variables and only DC coefficients are included for DC variables. So the model has a reduced order. In that reduced model, some eigenvalues uh, do not show up. But this has no consequence uh, on the other eigenvalues because the coefficients related to the states that are not included are actually zero in steady states. So this has no influence. So let's now have a look at what happens when we increase the truncation order while the harmonic contents of the periodic trajectory remains the same. We see that vertical lines of eigenvalues start to appear. This is expected from the theory of harmonic state space and each vertical line is equivalent, uh, well, to some extent, to one eigenvalue of a linear time invariant system. The length of the vertical lines depends on the truncation order. So what is important to notice is that truncation leads to unexpected, unexpected eigenvalues that are shifted away from their vertical lines, represented by arrows here. Those eigenvalues are called spurious eigenvalues, and they should be disregarded for the stability assessment. Another remark is that the position of the eigenvalue at the center of each vertical line converges as soon as the truncation order is equal or larger than the maximum steady state harmonic index. So as far as transfer functions are concerned, we show in the paper that they are also the same for dynamic phasors and harmonic state space models. For instance, between the DC Fourier coefficients of input and output variables, so without frequency shifts. However, there is an additional complexity for dynamic phasor models when we try to retrieve transfer functions that describe a frequency shift, for instance, between the DC input coefficient and the fundamental frequency output coefficient. And so this is a consequence of expressing the dynamic phasors in a rectangular form. So I'm now reaching the end of the presentation. To conclude, uh, the modeling methods of harmonic state space and dynamic phasors both rely on frequency lifting techniques. This is done to transform periodic systems into time invariant representations. They describe the same small signal uh, dynamics as long as the same non-zero harmonics are included in the formulations. For both methods, the truncation of the infinite dimensional formulations leads to apparition of spurious eigenvalues, and those must be disregarded for the stability assessment. They have no physical meaning. Uh, advantages of the methods are that harmonic state space gives all the transfer functions describing frequency shifts within the model, while dynamic phasor models are usually lower dimensional and give more flexibility. So naturally the opposite is true when it comes to limitations of the methods. Uh, future work on this topic will include, among others, uh, studying the impact of truncation on the transfer functions, as the work in the paper was limited to uh, the impact on eigenvalues. 
So this is uh, the end of the presentation. I would like to thank you for your attention. I'll do my best to answer any questions now, and but please also feel free to send questions to the addresses indicated uh, on the slide here. So thank you again, and uh, Stephen, uh, back to you. Great, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, the first question is from Zhao Yan. What is the benchmark of the comparison? Uh, is a full derivation of the transfer function conducted? Um, all right, uh, I'm sorry, I will read maybe the, the question again. So what is sure. the benchmark of the comparison? Is a full derivation of the transfer function conducted? Um, so actually we do not uh, benchmark the model against any particularly more complicated model, uh, but we do um, compare the methods with each other. We, I, I'm not sure I understand the, the meaning of the full derivation of the transfer function. Uh, probably you mean analytical, analytical derivation. Uh, we, I did not uh, conduct this uh, analytical derivation in particular because even for simple models, it quickly becomes very complicated. Although um, it's not excluded that this can be done in the future. So I hope this, uh, this answers your question. Sure, thank you. Um, for each method, so one has the advantage of having a lower dimension, but for each method, what is your sense of um, how big a system can be solved? Um, all right, so that's that's a very important question. I think uh, as as soon as you have the model, the and if you want to study the stability based on the eigenvalues, I think the the main calculation is calculating uh, calculating the eigenvalues of the state matrix. So uh, um, that that would be the the main um, calculation to do. However, what is more difficult is to determine the steady state periodic trajectory, and this involves solving a harmonic power flow and uh, of course there the the bigger uh, the bigger the system and the the more computational this will be right so is it possible to uh, pre-compute most of this to whatever the size of the system that is possible and then in real time then in, if anything happens that you need to react then there's some much simpler uh, computation tasks that you need to do to decide what uh, what control actions to take, almost like a table lookup or something. Um, that's that's a good question. Do you mean uh, having pre pre calculated uh, functions, for instance, for the harmonic power flow, the one that determines the, the steady state uh, trajectory, or were you thinking of something else? Yeah. So I was just thinking if. Um, uh, if this method can be applied in real time, then what are the pieces that you can pre-compute uh, on a slow time scale? Maybe things might change over slow time scale, but maybe you can compute pre-compute on a slow time scale, and then a and then very simple table lookup or something uh, in real time. Yeah, in case anything happens, then you make a quick decision. Is is some some breakdown like that possible um, to apply your method? Maybe actually I haven't uh, thought about it uh, from that perspective. Um, what I'm thinking is whether this would be uh, convenient for taking small, uh, uh, let's say faster decisions. Um, I think those methods are a very, very accur accurate, but also uh, they require quite a lot of details about the, the system, in particular when you want to have an accurate stability analysis. Um, everything relies on the determination of their harmonic content. So this means that you have to have a very detailed model of the, the converter, of their controller more particularly, of the, uh, the grid also. And so I, I believe that since determining the periodic trajectory is the, the most difficult part, uh, I'm, I'm not sure that it will be very convenient for uh, taking fast decisions. But of course, I, I might be wrong. And if I think uh, about it again, I might change my mind uh, on this question. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, 
Let's see if there are any other questions. Um, okay, if not, well, thank you again. Um, well, very good, pleasure. thanks. Thank you very much, Stephen.